The feather-tail glider, a marsupial, is the world's smallest gliding mammal. They're about the size of a small mouse and weigh in at around 12 grams, 0.42 of an ounce. They're found in forest and woodland down the east coast of Australia, ranging well inland, but not in Tasmania. Arguably, the species was better known to Australians from 1966, when it appeared on the first one-cent decimal coin, until 1990, when that denomination was withdrawn from circulation. Inside this spotted gum, just down here somewhere, there's the den of a feather-tailed glider. And that hollow came about in a very unusual way. Decades ago, this tree was logged. The loggers cut it off probably about here, and it then regenerated from the green bark, sending up a shoot that became a trunk, and gradually the bark and the new trunk closed over the old uh, stump, almost completely, but it left a hollow that can be entered through this opening just here. And it's just down there somewhere that the feather tail has made its home. I spotted the nest in early April. The hollow's entrance was stuffed with fresh green gum leaves, so it wasn't hard to figure out that something was living in there, and at first I suspected it was the larger sugar glider, but it turned out to be inhabited by a single feather tail. It's very unusual for a feather tail nest to be this close to the ground. Typically, they'd be in a suitable hollow with a small entrance way up in the canopy, where feather tails spend most of their waking hours, which of course are at night. But there aren't many trees with hollows nearby, so I guess my feather tail had to make do with what was available. From its nest, the feather tail climbs the spotted gum smooth trunk to the forest canopy, where it feeds on nectar, pollen, and arthropods like moths and termites. The species can glide for as much as 28 metres, and I recorded this one flying from just above the nest to a tree about three metres away. The tail after which they're named acts as a rudder to help steer them during flight. Now it's important to the feather tail to close off the entrance to its nest. To keep out the weather, to keep it nice and warm and snug inside, to keep out competitors, and as we'll see, to keep out predators. And what it does is to climb to the top of the tree above this spot and to trim and rain down pairs of gum leaves like these. And there are a lot of them lying on the ground just here. And then it comes to the ground, picks up the leaves that it wants. That way it doesn't have to drag them all the way down this smooth trunk. And then it makes the journey from the ground up to the hollow, a much shorter distance. And it inserts, it pulls the leaves into the gap. And how it does that is absolutely fascinating. Of course, if the nest had been where it would normally be, high in the canopy, the feather tail would have carried the material straight to the hollow. Here's how this minuscule marsupial secures its home by stuffing the vulnerable oversized entrance with leaves. It uses its prehensile tail to drag the leaves into position.
And here's how it takes the sprigs of leaves in tow. With its grasping paws, it passes the sprig under its body and slides it under the tail, which then curls around the leaves. But as anyone who's ever renovated an old house knows, not everything goes to plan. Hang on, I know I had those leaves in tow. What happened? They must be here somewhere. No, not under there. Or up there. Oh well. One of life's little mysteries. And then, one afternoon, disaster. A passing goanna, a fearsome predator of small mammals, makes a routine check of what might be in that hollow. Fortunately for our feather tail, it rakes out the bark and leaves blocking the top of the opening to the nest, but not the bottom. It uses its forked tongue to sample the air inside, but perhaps the scent of those fresh gum leaves masks the tiny marsupial's presence. The goanna fails to detect it and moves on. When the feather tail gets out of bed at 7pm and emerges into the night, it inspects the damage with consternation. For the next few minutes, it repeatedly circles the hollow. Unbelievable. Nights of labour have been trashed by the goanna, but at least he survived. Four nights later, the feather tail starts to rebuild. And in the course of reconstruction, it gets into a confrontation with another inhabitant of the hollow, a huntsman spider which decides to move elsewhere. Over the next few nights, the feather tail concentrates its efforts on reinforcing the bottom end of the opening closest to its nest. But rain comes, and an unexpected problem with this nest hollow becomes apparent. The smooth trunk of the spotted gum 
becomes slippery and extremely difficult to climb when it's wet. Plop! That's our little friend parachuting to the ground. It heads off into the dark to find a climbable rough barked trunk. It rained on and off for days and the carefully trimmed gum leaves for the nest lay unused at the base of the tree. But the story has a happy ending. On a dark night in mid-May, the camera captured a second feather tail. It seemed our bachelor had found a mate. Together they struggled to climb the wet trunk. Thereafter, there was no further modification to the nest, and I never recorded a feather tail there again. Clearly, the new couple had found a better place to live. If you liked this video, please hit that red subscribe button and then the bell icon, and you'll be notified of new Wirong Lane videos.